This is Fujifilm's most unique lens. So this is the 51.0. What I think makes this lens so special is it's actually only the second ever fully autofocus 51.0 lens. The only other one that's ever been produced was the, uh, the Canon 51.0 EF. Came out in 1989. And those things nowadays sell for around five and a half thousand dollars, which, you know, makes the $2,000 price point of the 51.0 from Fujifilm seem almost like a bargain. So what do you get for your $2,000? Well, you get a damn big lens, that's for sure. This thing is huge. You know, this thing is like a full frame size lens for an APC size uh, sensor. And I would say probably it compares in size to like the 16 to 55 2.8 from Fuji as well. It's got a 77 millimeter filter thread. It's an absolute behemoth. This thing really, I would say, is probably better suited to the larger Fuji cameras like the X-H2S or like the X-T5 with a grip. The small XE bodies and like the X-T30S and stuff like those. If you have those cameras, I would avoid going for this one here. So who is this lens for? This is for someone who takes portrait photography seriously. This is for wedding photographers that want to get the most unique shots possible on a Fuji system at least. This is for someone who shoots a lot in low light. I shoot a lot of nightclubs and I've used this lens pretty extensively and it's an absolute weapon. You know, before this I was using the 56 1.2, the old one, which is an amazing lens in itself. However, the, the 1.0 focuses faster in low light. It absorbs more light. You get an extra stop of, of, uh, of light gathering ability and it really makes a big difference in the photos as well. This lens has so much character and there's just something really magical about when you take a photo with it. It feels like, I don't know, it's really, really cool. When you shoot with this thing, it produces some unbelievable results and it's not hard to get really, really cool looking images out of this lens. And yeah, you know, if you're, if you're somebody that does this for a living and you like, you love shooting Fujifilm and you just want the best that they have to offer in terms of the portrait lens space, I would say the 51.0 is definitely the lens for you. And who is this lens not for? I think if you're on a budget, this lens is definitely not for you. 2000 uh, bucks, brand new. You can find them used for a little bit cheaper. I got this one for about $1,500 Australian on the secondhand market. And I'm very happy with that price, but you know, it is by no means a cheap lens. However, if you do compare it to like the, the Canon um, EF 51.0 at 5500 or if you look at the non-autofocusing manual 50mm lenses with this kind of aperture, namely like the Leica Noctilux, the 51.0 Noctilux, or even the 0.95 Noctilux, which is a little bit brighter than this, but still manual focus, those lenses are north of eight to $10,000. Um, I know the 0 0.95 is closer to $13,000 uh, last I checked. Another reason you might sort of want to avoid something like this is because you value small lenses. You want a compact system, you don't want anything huge. This is gigantic for a Fuji system. I know when I initially, I initially bought into Fuji in 2019, I had an XE3 and that was just to try and, I was using, I was shooting Canon professionally at the time and I, and I loved the small nature of the Fuji. I loved bringing it with me everywhere. I loved shooting with it. I had a 23 F2 and that's a tiny, awesome lens at the 50 F2 as well. That was great. But this lens is sort of the opposite of all of that. I mean, this thing is massive and it really reminds me, I mean, it's got the same filter thread as my old Canon lenses did, the old full frame ones. It's interesting because yeah, it's just, it's ma it's it's so big. You know, especially when the 56 one is, I mean, 85% of this lens, right? It's pretty damn close. Um, it's a little bit wider and this one obviously gets a little bit more shallower depth of field, but it's like the law of diminishing return. At what point do you value what you can get from a lens versus the cost of the lens itself? If you're on a budget and if you need something smaller, if you don't want to be carrying around so much size and weight, then this lens definitely isn't for you. Let's talk about what's good in this lens. At 1.0, the results are amazing. It is sharp, has an extremely pleasing image. The bokeh is sensational. Probably, it's definitely some of the best bokeh that I've seen on the Fuji system. And it's built extremely well. It's made in Japan, all metal, weather resistant as well, which the old 5612 was not. There's just something about having 1.0 on the aperture dial that kind of was really cool for me. Um, that's why I lent towards this lens. And the price that I got this at was similar to the price of a brand new 5612WR. It doesn't actually have that much chromatic aberration either, which is really, really good. A lot of lenses um, with very, very shallow apertures, especially like if you look at the cheaper uh, manual Chinese made lenses for the Fuji system, there's a few seven artisan lenses. Those at super wide apertures, they CA like crazy. You can only shoot an F 1.0 lens at 1.4 onwards in order to get a good image. As far as I'm concerned, it's not really a 1.0 lens. That's a lens that can theoretically go down to 1.0, but it's not really usable. 
whereas this is very usable at 1.0. And I think if you are not intending on shooting this at 1.0, it's probably unnecessary to get it because the 50 F2, for example, is about a quarter of the price. It's much smaller. It has linear motors, so it focuses faster. It's also weather resistant. If you're looking for a 50 that is better in almost every regard for certain applications, the 50 F2 is probably the option that I would suggest. But if you want that 1.0 aperture and you know you're gonna use that 1.0 aperture and you know you get paid money because you shoot portraits, then it's worth the extra amount of money for you. I know it was for me. The other thing that's amazing with this lens is the low light autofocus. Um, I know with the 56.12, it always hunted quite a lot at night. Very difficult in, in low light, like in nightclub situations. The biggest downside really with the, with the 56.12 was it just was so slow. I mean, it would hunt and hunt and hunt and I think that, you know, this lens, they've really improved that. It's a shame, unfortunately, that this doesn't have linear motors like the 90 F2 does. If they, if it did, I would imagine it would focus even faster, but that's, you know, that's a wish list for a version two of this lens, I guess, definitely. So what about using this lens for video? Well, I'm actually using it for video right now. As you can see, the focal length is quite a lot longer than my 18.14 that I had on there before. And, I think that it's interesting because this is at 1.0 right now. You really do need a variable ND filter in order to be able to shoot video at all with this thing because, you know, especially if you're shooting an F-Log to 1250 base ISO, I mean, yeah, it's going to be impossible to get anything um, to be exposed properly without a variable ND filter. So shout out to my variable ND filter. It's doing, it's doing wonders right now. The, the autofocus right now is set to eye tracking and I can't, you know, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I am in focus, but it's a lens that I think works really well if you're doing like B-roll, if you wanna get some really cool shallow depth of field in your images, but it's a, it's definitely more of a photography oriented lens. The autofocus in it is not super loud. Thankfully, the 5612 is quite loud. Check out the video. I mean, this is what it looks like. Let me know what you think. And yeah, as well, when you're using this as a, as a portrait lens, you have to remember one thing too, because I've seen a lot of reports online of people saying that this lens isn't very sharp, people saying that this lens, you know, a wide open, it has issues. I mean, it might depend on the, on the copy of the lens that you get. I think I got pretty lucky because mine at 1.0 is plenty sharp enough. It's got enough character and it's absolutely stunning. I think if you, you do have to understand as well that 1.0 is a remarkably shallow depth of field. So the fact that this lens can even nail focus as well as it does, and I know, I haven't really tried it on any of the older Fuji bodies, but on the X-H2S and on the X-T5, the autofocus performance with eye detect is pretty decent. I think the X-H2S nails it a little bit better, but the X-T5 is not bad too. And this lens has, has absolutely no issues resolving the 40 megapixels of the X-T5 as well. Obviously, you'd hope so for the price. But I think at 1.0, if you take a photo of someone standing face on, you're gonna, you, you know, if they move just even a little bit to the left or the right, their eyes gonna go out of focus. So it can be a little bit tricky to nail the autofocus with this, but the fact that it does it as well as it does, I think is something that really has to be commendable. So in conclusion, the 51.0 is without a doubt Fujifilm's most unique lens. It's a lens that is really designed for people that either want the absolute best the Fuji has to offer, that have the budget, to be able to afford a lens like this, designed for the kind of people that don't mind the size. I think the fact that Fuji spent so much time and R&D money on creating this lens, is, it's awesome. I think that the fact that they did that, this is a lens that's just, it's so special. And the way that it renders images and the way that it produces results is just, yeah, I love this thing. I'm, I'm, I really, really think it's awesome. And I'm excited to use it for more shoots. I'm excited to, you know, I'm gonna be filming some more videos with me actually going on set doing some shoots with this thing and bring you some more content as well. So be sure to subscribe, like, comment. These YouTube videos are me just sort of expanding my video making ability and, and trying trying to learn this new skill. And I'm super excited to share it with you guys and, and I hope you follow along on this journey with me. Anyway, thanks for watching, bye.